Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to start the ZBA meeting for July 27th, 2016. Uh, the next ZBA meeting will be August 31st, 2016. Um, Tony, would you uh, please lead us in the pledge? Yes. Have you all rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rich, if you would uh, read the preamble, please. Absolutely. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For the benefit of those who have not attended these hearings, the procedure is as follows. The petitions will be heard in the order they were posted in the legal notice. However, the chairman may change the order with consent of the board to expedite the public hearing as appropriate. The board will treat all petitioners, their representatives, abutters, and other interested parties fairly and with respect. We allow each petitioner to state why his or her petition should be granted. Following the petitioner's statement, any abutter or interested party is allowed to speak for or against the petition. In the interest of getting all the facts, we will go around a second time. The board may elicit testimony at any point, but we cannot allow any cross-discussion. All questions must be directed to the board. Also, we ask that you do not repeat yourself or your neighbor's testimony. If you wish to just indicate concurrence, please do so. After hearing all the facts regarding a petition, the chairman will close the public hearing and the board will deliberate and vote on the petition before moving on to the next petition. You can expect fairness and impartiality by this board. The Zoning Board is empowered to legalize the breaking of the town zoning ordinance, and this is not done lightly. State law and local ordinances set out the criteria that must be met in order for this board to grant your petition. I remind you that it is your responsibility to prove your case so that the board has justification for granting the petition. The minimum requirements are listed in the form you receive from the Community Development Office, and it would be helpful if you would proceed on that basis. Please turn off all cell phones and pagers. And uh, anyone that plans to speak tonight, uh, if you could stand up to be sworn in. If you plan on doing any speaking tonight, you need to be sworn in. Okay. And hold up your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'll uh, start with the first agenda item. Make sure when you come up, please make sure that the mic is on, the green light is lit, and please remember to sign in. Uh, first agenda item is, oh, before we start, I'm sorry, um, with Fran and Lynn out this evening, uh, Lenny will sit in for Lynn and Tom, you'll be sitting in for Fran. So the first agenda item, uh, Gregory Michael Esquire of Bernstein, Schur, Sawyer, Nelson, PA Petitioner, and Kathy L. Wharton, Worthen, and Stephen B. Worthen owners variance under Section 3.05 of the Zoning Ordinance to permit a garage 34 feet from the rear property line, whereas 40 feet is required. The parcel is located at 5 Sheridan Way in the R Residential District, tax map 6A-1, Lot 066, case number 2016-28. Good evening, Attorney Michael. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, pleasure to be here with you to discuss the Worthen application. Uh, just by way of background, I've got an existing condition plan that was filed with the board which shows the 0.98 acre parcel owned by the Worthens in Merrimack, which abuts Babusik Lake, and I, that's going to be an important consideration as we briefly discuss this. As you can see, the existing conditions show the house, the existing house, to be well within the, and I'm going to say this, the rear setback. And this is kind of funky because most of the time when you face the lake, that's the front. But Merrimack's rules suggest that the nearest road is how we s establish frontage. This property is accessed four seasons. You can see four seasons lane at the bottom of the plan and it loops around. And then you see Sheridan Way, which is really a private right of way, which not only services the Worthen property, but a couple of properties heading north northerly from their property on the lake. And again, I point out that the, the, the important line that I'm showing you here is this top yellow line. And this is the existing home and you can see that it's significantly within what is the 40-foot rear setback. 
This is a grandfathered lot, so if it were a side setback, it would be 15 feet, but it's not, so that's why we're here before the board. I would point out that our plan of action, if you will, uh, would meet the zoning were that the case, but it doesn't, and we respect what the ordinance says, which is why we're here before you. You can also see an existing well located in the area where my finger is pointed. This is an old home. This has been here since at least 1945. The best records that we can find with the town date it back a number of years. And when I spoke to Meridian Land Services, we're not really sure where the, quote, septic system is, because many of these systems, and I'm using that in its most liberal sense, unfortunately, we don't know where they are. We think it's down closer to the lake in this, in this area, away from the well, which is currently located here. This is all going to change if we're able to get the variance. Let me flip to the next plan. As you can see from, from this plan, and I've drawn a few yellow lines, and I'll point out the lines as best I can. I drew in kind of Sheridan Way for you. This is, again, the, the entire parcel. This is an easement that runs through it to allow not only access for this property, but the northerly properties that I mentioned. And you can, you know, if you look at a tax map, you'd see them. It's not critical to this. There's very little traffic here. Again, it serves more as a driveway. But you can see it does bisect, in some respect, this parcel. What the uh, Worthens are planning to do is move the well to this rear area to get it away from the lake and away from any septic. The plan is to have a new state design septic, which has been approved and filed for, will be in this particular area. And I will tell you that the ground kind of starts sloping. You can see the gradient here, which is one of the reasons the house is located here. You'll notice the house is well within the setback. We've been able to bring the house southerly, if you will, to maintain the appropriate setback. The world in, uh, this is New Hampshire, not Miami Beach, would like a garage attached. They're older people. And the proposed garage, you can see, is, is in that location. In fact, the surveyors had it more parallel, and I asked them to push it back to give us more room, more space between the garage and the Sheridan Way. The other thing it did for us was to get any structures out of the well radius. So we've been trying to be sensitive not only to the, the well radius, but also a distance if a person backs out, they're not in, in Sheridan Way, and they won't be. That's uh, close to 30 feet or so in this, in this area. So we've tried our best to make this work as effectively as we can. When you move from this point, what we try to do is leave some space so you can ac safely access around the house and not be on a steep slope. We've pulled the septic system down into this area. We'll be closing off that well. The only issue. The only issue is a six-foot encroachment of the garage on what is the ostensible rear setback. But I would point out that that is less than the current, encro the current encroachment that I showed you uh, on the first plan. With that in mind, I'll do my best to take you through the, the elements. <coughs> this is working. Yes, this is working. I don't mean, need, to, need to remind the board of the five you know, elements that we need or itemizations or criteria for zoning variance. You're certainly well aware of them. Number one is certainly granting the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. As the courts have said and we've reminded you in the past, the variance must unduly and in a marked degree conflict with the ordinance such that it violates the ordinance's basic zoning objectives. Well, a basic zoning objective for a rear yard setback is to ensure that there is adequate area. In this instance, there certainly is. And as I pointed out, we're going to actually be, re be reducing the encroachment with, a, with this particular plan versus what's there now. We believe that there's more than sufficient area. And quite frankly, ordinarily, that would be considered the side lot setback. And if it were, we'd be well within the 15-foot limit that is allowed for these old lots of record. Again, the proposed garage reduces the existing nonconformity, and we believe that the proposed residential use is, in, is conforming with uh, zoning. This is the residential zone of Merrimack, 
and we believe that there's not going to be any significant uh, instance where this would be contrary to the public interest in any way, shape, or form. It allows a safe and reasonable use of the property, and as I've described to you, we're going to get rid of the, quote, existing septic system, whatever that looks like, and install a new state and town approved system to protect the environment and Babusik Lake, which is an important town resource. I, excuse me, I apologize. Yeah. I thought I had the nice. I thought it was the music outside of no, the bandstand. That's my phone. That's Again, I, I apologize. That's is, quite it, all right. Uh, all right. is there any questions on number one from the board? Okay. Please continue. Spirit of the ordinance, we believe, is, is clearly observed in this case. I mean, when you take a look at the spirit, you're looking at what's it really about. You're balancing the kind of the, 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 the issues that are before the board. We believe that the character of the property, the neighborhood is not going to be negatively impacted. It doesn't change the neighborhood in any way, shape, or form. We're replacing a, an older home that is more encroaching with a newer home with updated septic. So we believe that the spirit of the ordinance is clearly observed, and we believe that the... Uh, amenities that we're trying to attach to this makes sense and again provide protection to Babusik Lake. Any questions about two? Any questions? Granting the variance would do substantial justice. Again, the board is aware substantial justice is done when the loss or denying the variance exceeds any gain to the public. And what gain to the public is there here other than, you know, just fundamentally drawing a line and saying you can't be over the line. It just makes no sense in this particular situation. We believe that in this instance, there's no appreciable gain to the public and a significant, a significant, in effect, loss to the owners by not being able to cite this in a way that makes sense and allows adequate and fair use of the property, especially the area that's, that we've, we've located, the, where we've located the home. That's the flatter, more sensible area for the home. We believe substantial justice is clearly observed in granting this variance. Any questions? Okay. Values of the surrounding properties will not be diminished. They're not going to be diminished. We're, we're, fake, we're fixing this up. We're making it better, clearing out the old home, cleaning up the septic, relocating the well. Uh, again, making the site, in effect, more, more conforming. It's a single-family residence, which, which is presumed to be uh, a, a logical and legitimate use of the property, which it is, there'll be no diminution of value of any surrounding properties. Any questions about that? So finally, hardship. Owing to the special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area, denial of the variance would result in a necessary hardship. And the first criteria is no fair or substantial relationship exists between the general public purpose of the ordinance provision and the application of the property. In this instance, this is this property is, is is pretty unique. Number one, we've got a property that has a house that's currently non-conforming. That's part of it. And I would point out, if you look at the easterly and southerly and easterly portions of the parcel, it, it slopes <coughs> away and it precludes any reasonable development in those areas without some significant fill, cuts, and quite frankly, something that would not be beneficial, we believe, to the area nor to the lake. It reduces the building envelope. If you look at the back area, when I say back area, I'm talking to the area, if you will, east of Sheridan Way that I just pointed out on the plan. There's wetlands that you begin to get close to, and we believe that the location of the, of the house is in the proper location. Again, we're just talking about a six-foot garage encroachment. And this, again, is a fairly unusual piece, the way it's laid out. And again, it's unusual because of the way the roadway is. You know, we're using Four Seasons as the road, which really is kind of funky in my mind, but we're using it. So it is unusual in terms of the slopes, the roadway, how the frontage is defined by the ordinance. It's a very unique location. The Sheridan Way, ag again, that's an easement that we, we have to leave in place for the other abutting owners. So it is a unique parcel because it is bisected by that piece. In addition, it's a reasonable use. It's allowed by right, by right in the zone, and um, we think that it makes sense to allow it. I'd like to comment just quickly on the uh, comments made by staff. They indicated that we're, there were a couple of, and, and I'll read it. 
the typographical errors on the plan are confusing or conflicting information. We're not really sure what that is. Tom Carr and I took a look at the plan, but suffice to say, I don't know that it's really material or relevant to what we're talking about here. I mean, the plan is here for the purpose of showing you the six-foot encroachment. That's really what it's here for. Whatever information might be, um, there might be minor typos. We apologize for that. We're happy to fix it. The second issue is the, the, uh, the famous shed. If you notice, there's a shed located here. When the field survey was done, it's actually, I would say, more within our property boundaries. But I spoke to my clients, and I want to assure the board of this. And this is for the record. Um, you know, they are going to make it conforming, remove it, or get a, get a per whatever it takes, we'll move it, reduce it, whatever we need to make it work. We're not going to leave it non-conforming. The shed's been there for a long, 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 long time. It well predates my clients. My clients have only been there three or four years. This shed probably goes back 40 years. But I want to assure the board that I've made it clear to them that if it wasn't there before 1953 when zoning started, then it's not necessarily grandfathered and they have to comply and they're prepared to do that. I just want to assure the board of that, that the shed will be brought into compliance. Uh, we'll probably do it at the same time the construction begins on the property. So I just want to assure the board that that is not unnoticed by us since staff brought it to our attention and we're happy to deal with it and we will deal with it. Uh, and that was one of my questions for you because I had that memo up here as well. Uh, Rob, uh, based on Attorney Michael's um, uh, conversation about the shed, does that fulfill staff's, um, I guess, inquiry into this, or, uh, or I guess, how you, uh, the next step would be to either see to either get a permit or, or make it. Yeah. Let me make it easy. The condition could be by the board. They don't get a certificate of occupancy for the house until the shed's brought into compliance. Yeah. And the reason I say that, I don't want to say building permit mm -hmm. because we may use the same builder while they're building to come on, to, to make renovations, move it, and deal with it. So I'd rather say certificate of occupancy. I think that's fair. It establishes a objective benchmark for staff mm -hmm. to ensure that the shed is moved, fixed, permitted, whatever we're going to do with it. Okay. That I think that's a reasonable compromise. It's the only thing that would have to change when you make your motion then is we have it set out within 90 days because we just – the number out so we'd have to change that language from 90 days to before a uh, CO is issued that the shed would be you know, investigated if a permit's needed or whatnot okay right. and then the, the reason I ask that is our, our builder may be the one and it just makes it I'm not sure exactly when we're going to be able to get out there so I'd appreciate that thank you my other I guess my other question is um, you're looking for six feet on the back um, can you, is there, I just kind of curious as why uh, it seems like you can't move the house six feet because it hasn't been built yet. You can't put it six feet forward. You know, it seems like the, that almost be would. W the, the minute you move it, you're going to run into our septic tank. Oh, and, okay. we're and we're trying to make sure we've got good access and egress with equipment if needed around that house for safety, for fire. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to move around the building, and it starts to slope. Okay. So we we that's the first thing I said when mm -hmm. I saw this plan. Yeah. The second thing I said is move the garage back if you can. And we, we were able to move it back. And in fact, by doing it, we reduced the encroachment by a couple of feet. Okay. So we've, we, have, we have really looked at this. Okay. And this, we believe, is a, a good balance with the lot, the slopes, and the stuff that we're dealing with, including the septic. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, any other questions from the board? Uh, what was the technical difficulty to conflict? What was that? Um, yeah, it's basically in the notes. When I was going through the plan, uh, there's a uh, minor typos that don't matter. But then I looked at notes three and six, and I saw like, the plan is the result of the field survey by this office. And then I see note six that says the boundary is only done by reference. So kind of like, is it a just reference plan, or was it a survey that was done? And then the certification. Oh, the, first of all, then it says the survey was done uh, October 15 and April 16, but then you look at the certification, it says it was done June of 2012. So it's all minor stuff, immaterial to what this board has to deal with. That, so that doesn't affect any decision here tonight? No, not at all. Respect. Okay, great. Excellent. Uh, any other questions for uh, Attorney Michael? Okay. I am going to oh. open. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry if, if I may, um, 
I started to chuckle at the beginning of your presentation where you're talking about the conditions of septic systems in lakefront properties. I noticed that. <laughs> It's, it's, it's I, a, and I apologize if anybody was, right. was offended by that. It's just that I've had experience in dealing with those in, uh, in, years, in years past. And, you know, you were lucky if you had a punctured 55-gallon drum. I didn't say that. <laughs> I understand, but, you know. I use septic systems yes. in a generic You were format. lucky if you had the 55-gallon drum. Thank you. Admittedly, thank you. Um, Let's open this up for public hearing. Is there anybody for this petition that would like to speak? Is there anybody against this petition that would like to speak? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Are there any further questions for Attorney Michael regarding this petition? Okay, so the public hearing is closed. A discussion of the board? Discussion, motion. I'd like to make the motion to grant uh, Gregory Michael, uh, Esquire, Bernstein, Schur, Sawyer, Nelson, PA, and Kathy Worthen, Stephen Worthen owners, uh, variance under section 3.05 of the zoning ordinance to permit a garage 34 feet from the rear property line, whereas 40 feet is required. Parcels located at 5 Sheridan Way in the R residential district, tax map 6A 1. Lot 066, cast, um, case number 2016-28, um, with the staff recommendations of um, obtaining a uh, certificate. Uh, certificate of occupancy. Yeah, prior to issuance of the certificate of occupancy. Yeah, so prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, um, that the shed be appropriately dealt with by relocating or, or gaining some type of a permit. I think uh, the words would be brought into compliance brought with, into, okay. with, with, with the Merrimack ordinance. Does that work for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So brought into compliance with the Merrimack, with ordinance. The Merrimack ordinance. Thank you. Sorry. And um, the second being NHDES shoreland permit, if necessary, to be obtained prior to the issuance of the building permit or construction of any proposed improvements um, within the 250 foot shoreland protection area. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Sustained? That's two, Thank five, zero. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for your time. Have a good evening. Next uh, is Margaret M. O'Neill, petitioner, owner, variance under section 3.02.1 of the zoning ordinance to permit a front entrance staircase 28 feet from the front property line, whereas 38 feet is required. The parcel is located at 60 Island Drive in the R Residential Aquifier Conservation Elderly Overlay and Shoreland Protection Overlay District and 100 Year Flood Hazard Area Tax Map. 4D-2, lot 010, case number 2016-29. Come on down. Attorney Michael, I'm sorry, did you I did, did you sign in? I'm yeah, yeah, okay. You, all right, thank you. If you could just please sign in uh, and make sure the mics are on, state your name and uh, Make sure, I'm sorry, can you make sure the green light's on? Sorry. Um, since that time, we've experienced um, three major floods, one in 1987 of 54 inches. I'm, I'm, I hate to do this. I'm getting signal. Can you pull the mic a little closer to you? I apologize. Okay. Better? There we go, yeah. Most people don't say that I talk close or uh, softly. softly. <laughs> and the, the green light is on. Okay. I'm just. So, yeah, my sorry. name is Mark and I'm gotcha. I own property at 60 Island Drive in Merrimack. I have owned the house since 1979, and I have experienced three floods, one in 1987 with 54 inches of water in my home, one in 2006 with 30 feet. Yeah, I would like to go talk to Okay. 
Sorry about that. Can I start again? You, you can continue from where you were at. Um, the the second flood in 2006, I had 11 feet of water in my home. And in 2007, we had seven feet of water in our home. So we have finally gotten a settlement from the um, flood insurance company just today. Mm -hmm. And um, we are in the process of tearing down our house, raising the land eight feet, and building a new house on top of it. Okay. To um, fit within the shoreline setback and the town setbacks and all the side setbacks has been a challenge. And um, right now, everything fits except for two stairs of that um, of the front stairs. It's mm -hmm. We, the um, front porch is eight feet above ground at mm -hmm. this point to get it out of the floodplain so we never flood again. And um, in order to come down out of that front door, we have to have an eight foot staircase. And they say, stairs, huh? yeah, it says, they said between one foot and two foot is the actual encroachment. Okay. So um, my husband, Bill, is here and he can speak. He, um, if you we want to, have the plan here. Actually, uh, if you want to do the five points, we have uh, we have yep, the diagrams. Yep, we can do you, the five we, points. We have the diagrams you gave us. All right, um, great. So if we could get those read in, and then we'll stop after each one if we have any questions. Okay. Okay, the, the first point on the public interest. Granting the variance for the front steps to our new residents will have no impact on town water, property sewage, or other containment management or its sensitive town lands. The staircase will enhance the look of the new home and allow easy access to the building. We designed the home originally to be handicap accessible since we are both uh, getting a little older and we've uh, built it with one floor living basically. The main floor of the house will be master suite and everything else within it. So as a result of this, we had to go quite high in the sky to get out of the floodplain. The house is going to be constructed with best practices to fit with other property improvements in the area. This will be consistent with the public interest. Uh, we are probably the last of the 10 or 11 homes on the island to make improvements to our property. Uh, we haven't been able to afford to do it over the past nine years and now we're finally in a position so that's why we're before you at this point. Any questions? Okay, number two. The proposed front staircase does not impact those critical criteria stipulated in section one. This will enhance the overall look and street appeal of our new home, enhance the property value, impact or improve the use and access of the house and be constructed with commensurate with construction best practices to fit with other property improvements in our area. Any questions? Number three. Number three on substantial justice. It'll enhance the property value of our home at 60 Island Drive. It'll enable us to have proper ingress and egress to the front of the house. The grade level of the new home is being substantially raised to get the building out of the floodplain. It will complement the look of the neighborhood and provide better access to our home because of the height considerations. Any questions? Okay. Number four, values. The proposed front staircase does not impact those critical criteria stated in the statute one will enhance the look and street appeal of our house, enhance our property values, improve access to the home, and be constructed with commensurate with construction best practices to fit with all other property improvements in our area. Any questions from the board? Okay, number five. Unnecessary hardship. The proposed staircase meets the stated sensitive criteria stipulated in section 3.02.1 purpose and possesses the net effect of enhancing the property value and street appeal of 60 Island Drive. 
the overall lot size and frontage severely limits what we can do to enhance both the utility, economy, and curb appeal of our property. This necessitates a, ver necessitates a variance to the setback to perform the installation of the front staircase. The one interesting thing here that might make a point is, is when, when the original property was surveyed out on, on Island Drive, uh, when they did it for the roadway, when the roadway was actually constructed, it went to the far left of the proposed um, right of way. And as a result, the current road is now on the extreme left side of that right of way. And we have a wide band of that right of way. And then we've got the uh, proposed setback from that point. So uh, there is a tremendous amount of space there. In fact, we moved the house back away from the street an additional five or six feet to comply with everything. And that's, you know, and in doing so, we managed to make the height requirement that we needed. But the problem is, is the staircase now, to be a graduated staircase, goes a couple of feet into this setback, so. Okay. I understand. Uh, can you, did you just read in number two as well? Oh, sorry. That's okay. The proposed use is reasonable because access to the front of the home has to be quite high as a result of the flood elevation requirements. This necessi necessitates a gradual level staircase instead of a steep grade. This will result in enhanced property value and better curb appeal. Denial of a variance for the proposed staircase would create a hardship for us by denying the use and reasonable utilization of the front entrance to our new home. Does everybody feel they met the uh, criteria for hardship? Yes. Okay. Oh, you do or don't, Lenny? You do? Okay. So you don't need to read B. Okay. Thank you. Um, what questions does the board have um, for the O'Neills? Anybody? Tom? Any questions? I'm going to set that Okay. Uh, I'll open this up for public discussion. Is there anybody that would like to speak in favor of this? You want to speak in favor? Okay. Could you just allow this gentleman? Yes, oh, you could, yeah, I need you to sign in and state your name. Uh, yes, he is. They don't make it for midget, right? Uh, could, could you say No, I'd be in favor for this because Bill and I both are, are heart patients. Uh -huh. And I think for a safety reason, it uh, would be easier access for the fire department to uh, hopefully get us to safety. <laughs> in, in, uh, heaven so, for, uh, so for the record, uh, can you state your name and uh, address, please? For the record, can you state your name and address? Uh, David Garrett, 56 okay. Island Drive. Okay, excellent. So you're and in favor? Uh, I'd be in favor for it. I think it's a, a safety thing, and it shouldn't upset the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can, you can come back down if you'd like. <laughs> uh, is there anybody that wants to speak ag in, against this petition? Anybody else want to speak in favor? Okay. We'll close the public hearing before I do that. Is there any other questions for the O'Neills? Everybody all set? Yep. All right, great. So discussion by the board, motion. I would move that we grant the variance to uh, Margaret O'Neill, petitioner owner, variance under section 3-1. Pardon me. Uh, move to uh, approve the uh, variance for Margaret O'Neill under section 3.02.1 of the zoning ordinance to permit a front entrance staircase 28 feet from the front property line, whereas 30 feet is required. The parcel is located at 60 Island Drive in the R Residential Aquifer Conservation Elderly Overlay and Shoreland Protection Overlay District and the 100-year flood hazard area. 
don't know how many more impacts there are there, but <laughs> there might be one or two that we're missing. Uh, tax map 4D-2, lot 010, case number is 2016-29. Second. Um, on the same one, okay, very similar. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, abstain, 5 zero. Zero. Congratulations. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. And uh, you do have 30 days for someone to appeal um, the approval. Uh, so if you start your construction within 30 days, it is at your own risk. But other, other than that, good luck, and hopefully the new house is a little drier. <laughs> I hope so. Thank, Thank you. Much. Have a great night. Okay, I keep it no <laughs> It'll be <dry>. Have a <laughs> good night. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, discussion regarding items. Uh, next month will be uh, board elections. I was told to announce that. So if you're interested in chair or vice chair or not, it's the elections are next month. And uh, next, anything else from staff to discuss? Nothing for me. All right. Any approval of the minutes for June 29th, 2016? Actually, and I was wondering, since we're on the discussion, okay. um, was staff aware that we would have an absence, that Lynn would be absent today? I n or we never heard back from Lynn as to if she was attending or not. Okay. Now, do you know how many times, by chance, in the past one year that she has not attended? Off the top of my head, no, but I can certainly go look it back up. Okay. The only reason I ask is um, we had a conversation. I'm pretty sure we implemented a, a standing policy, I believe, three years back about um, inexcused absences. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that we should really take a look at as a board. It is in the bylaws. There is a uh, three unexcused absences. Um, it is then at the discretion of the chairman of the board, uh, the chairperson. Uh, at that point um, and so that would be a conversation with Fran at the point at this point because she is the current chair um, but uh, and so yeah yeah I have that discussion um, anything else how about the minutes anybody everybody take a look at those does it look good any questions concerns thoughts Move to approve the minutes of June 29, 2016, as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention, one, two, three, four approvals. Uh, Tony. Yeah. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rich. All in favor? Boom. Aye. Aye. Done. All done. All opposed. Well, we're on coffee, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on in for coffee. Um, guided, guided tour. Guided tour. <laughs> I mean, well, eventually we are going to put a kiosk there. Yeah, on BB Lane. Yeah. Yep. So. But yeah. 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 I think that.